Dr. John Noe speaks to us today from Indianapolis. He earned his doctorate from a conservative Christian seminary and major university by researching the material that eventually resulted in his book, Unraveling the End. John, it's great to talk with you again today. Hey, Steve. Good to be with you again. Your book looks at the strengths and weaknesses of four popular end-time views, then combines them into a single, synthesized approach. Before we introduce these views, I think we need to answer the question of why this really matters. Consider this, everybody. Philosopher Bertrand Russell, medical missionary Albert Schweitzer, and others have rejected Orthodox Christianity because they concluded Jesus was either lying or mistaken. Could you explain that first, John? C.S. Lewis uh, said uh, their master told them so. And he said this, by the way, uh, in his uh, essay called The World the World's Last Night back in, I believe it was 19... 19- uh, 60s or so, and he was talking about Jesus' statement in Matthew 24, 34. Jesus said this, he said, I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all of these things have happened. And, and uh, Lewis, in his essay, said it is an exhibition of error. You hear that, Steve? C.S. Lewis is accusing Jesus of error. I hate to hear that. That's so surprising, because he was one of my heroes. He's written some good apologetics. I'm really surprised, but there it is in black and white. It is black and white and and red in my Bible. Let's take a look right now at these four end-time views. We'll start with the one that's most common among evangelical Christians today, premillennial dispensationalism. John, do you have a quick layman's definition for us? The premillennial dispensational view subscribes to what we might call a soon, very soon coming fulfillment, and that is that Christ's second coming or his return is very quickly to happen and does not need any uh, preceding events to take place. Now, let's go to two of the other views, amillennialism and postmillennialism. They're often confused. What's the difference between them, John? The amillennial view, which is uh, probably the second most prominent, uh, is a view of, uh, Steve, partial fulfillment, and that uh, the future final fulfillment, as some of them call it, uh, we can't know. They say nobody can know uh, when Christ's uh, so-called second coming and return will be, uh, but it will happen in human history, and it'll come sometime during their symbolic 1,000-year uh, millennium, which started back in Jesus's uh, time and has continued on for more than uh, uh, 2,000 years currently. Postmillennialism is also a partial fulfillment uh, view, and they see that some of these things have been fulfilled back then, but the final fulfillment uh, lies in a far distant future, and they believe that it's maybe a 100, 1,000, even 5,000 years away because uh, the world must become more and more Christianized uh, until we enter into a golden era of special blessings that may or may not last for a thousand years or more. And then at that time, Christ will return. Well, John, uh, you seem to borrow most heavily from preterism. Exactly what does that term mean for those unfamiliar with it? Preterist it comes from the Latin word praetor, which means past in fulfillment. And uh, uh, it's the idea that uh, everything Jesus said would happen happened exactly as and when he said it would, i.e. within that generation that we uh, talked about at the start of this uh, uh, interview, Steve. John, I think what I enjoyed most about your book was the principles of interpretation. And the principle that resonated the most with me is that we must base our interpretation, whether it's literal, symbolic, or whatever, on the way things actually worked out in history. How does this support the idea that Christ came in judgment in 70 A.D.? The coming in judgment, he called it coming on the clouds, judgment against Jerusalem in that first century, which was emblematic of the new or the old covenant animal sacrifice blood temple system and end that age. As you point out, there are a lot of precedents for God coming in the clouds of judgment in the Old Testament. Could you name a couple examples for us? For example, many of the fulfillments in the past in the the Old Testament are are God coming in judgment upon Assyria and Babylon and Edom and a number of others, probably about uh, half a dozen or more examples using that same kind of language. Let's switch to something else. Uh, John, your synthesized approach doesn't seem to borrow a whole lot from premillennial dispensationalism, but 
borrows heavily from preterism. How about the other two views? What did you find worth keeping in amillennialism and postmillennialism? Well, that's a very good question, Steve. In my opinion, the, the greatest strength, and not the only one, but certainly the greatest strength of the amillennial view is their idealist interpretation of the book of Revelation. In other words, it sees the, the book of Revelation as the ongoing struggle between good and evil. Now, as far as the major strength of the postmillennial view, I think it's their strong kingdom society orientation and their positive emphasis and motivation for human effort to expand uh, the kingdom of God uh, on this earth. John, let's tie it all together with another reason why this is so important. I think your book is saying that if we fail to recognize the destruction of Herod's temple in 70 AD as Jesus coming in the clouds, we tend to substitute a secret coming in our day, compromising our effectiveness for the kingdom of God. Well, it creates what we call a short-sighted mentality, you know. Uh, why polish uh, brass on a sinking ship? Why bother? I mean, God's just going to come and destroy it, so why should I go out and risk uh, my reputation by, by confronting some of these bad, evil influences in society when any day now uh, we're going to be taken out of here and God's going to destroy this whole world? Of course, what John was just discussing was primarily the results of the premillennial dispensationalist view not his own synthesized approach. John, it's been a real pleasure. Thanks for talking with us today. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. Everybody, you can learn all the details of what we've been discussing, plus a whole lot more in Unraveling the End. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. you hear this.com.